A family grieve for the loss of their daughter. Five-year-old Karolina Golubek is laid to rest in a cemetery in Poland. But she died in Bridgend, killed when she was caught in an automatic gate. A tragic accident, but a week earlier, another child had been killed in the same way. With two children's deaths in a week, tonight we explore the safety of automatic gates. It would certainly break your arm, uh, could well tear it off. There are no real government guidelines that says this is what you should have as the custom. We cannot exclude the possibility that there will be further fatalities unless action is taken. Now, Carolina's family are ready to speak out. Some people have to do something to save other sure. life. Five-year-old Karolina Golubek spent most of her short life growing up in Bridgend. The only daughter of Joseph and Barbara. She was born in Poland. When she was 10 months old, the family moved to Wales to find work. They speak little English, but want to tell us their story. Karolina's cousin, Anna Kedras, helped us translate. When they came to, to Wales, uh, Karolina, she was 10, 10 months old. Long hair, she was like Dolly, she was so pretty. Carolina went to Pennebont Primary School. She was beginning to make friends as her English improved, but she also spent time playing on her own. Her love of cats meant she followed them everywhere, and she was often seen in this nearby street. On July the 3rd, Carolina was spotted outside this apartment block. No one knows exactly what happened, but the electronic gate closed trapping her. Nobody knows what's happened exactly and uh, how this happened. She played with this cat. She didn't realize that this gate is moving. Everything, what they know is that this gate crushed her lungs. And we don't realize that gate like this can kill us, can kill someone, can kill some little child. Now we know that it's very dangerous. Local resident Elvet Morgan was one of the last to see Carolina alive. He passed her playing at Brook Court as he walked his dogs. I heard a woman call out and I turned around and I could see Carolina lying on the floor. And I went back and um, the woman who told me at the gate I caught a little girl. The paramedics and the ambulance was there. They took the little girl to hospital. So I waited round for a while and then the police officer came back and they had informed everybody that the little girl had passed away. It was a horrific shock, not only for myself, but for all the people living in the area. To see such a little girl was no more than one metre long, just laying on the floor motionless. Uh, and it hits home to everybody who's got children. Just having a look at the gates where Carolina died, it, I'm surprised at how small they are, and I somehow can't believe that that is big enough to kill someone. An inquest's been opened into Carolina's death. The police and health and safety executive are investigating exactly what happened. It's expected the findings will be published next year. The accidents made locals reflect on the community they live in and they want to make it safer. Between Carolina's house and where she died, there used to be a play area. Now there's a campaign to bring it back. I'd requested this park to be reinstated three years ago and I do feel that there's a possibility she would have been playing here and not on the streets. And, you know, you do tend to feel that I hadn't pushed for the park hard enough first time round. At the end of the day, I would have rather seen Carolina play here than by those gates. It could have been one of my own grandchildren. I have grandchildren of the same age. Um, they play on the street, they play uh, in relative safety in a, in a nearby park. Um, this area hasn't got a park with equipment. Uh, it was taken away from them. 
ironically on grounds of health and safety. Building play areas may help keep children away from dangers like electronic gates, but anyone with kids knows they'll play anywhere and everywhere, and often where you don't expect them to. The tributes to six-year-old Samelia are many and heartfelt, but none so much as those of her family. Samelia's mum and sister tried to free her, but they couldn't move the gate. Just to lose her like that, <laughs> to watch your own child die in front of you, it's so hard. We push the gate so hard and it wouldn't open. Oh, push the gate. I use every energy to open that gate. We push it so hard. Just... Six-year-old Samelia Campbell was killed in Manchester just a few days before Carolina. The full front of this gate, which was in motion, came across, stopped, and caught her here. And then crushed her, the full weight of this gate, on her chest, suffocating her to death, died here. So even when they tried to brace it with stuff to stop this didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't work. Samelia's mother, Judith, and 16-year-old sister, Tashika, saw it all. It was three or four people watched Samelia die. I mean, we have to commend a police officer who actually tried to stop it because he had to run through the house, come through the back where the gate was and try and stop the gate physically, trying to smash the box off. But even when he tried that, it was still closing. Judith, she actually held her daughter's hand as she died. And for her not to be able to pull her daughter out of danger, for any mother out there, imagine, imagine them stuck in a situation that you can't help them. Two deaths in a matter of days, but there could have been a third. Just five minutes away from Samelia's home in Manchester, seven-year-old Samuel Currier was caught in an automatic gate right in front of his house. Where did your foot get stuck then? See those sparks? Yeah. That's where my foot was. So you were then put, sort of pulled along here? Yeah. Right. So how do you feel when you look at the gate now? Um, scared. Samuel had gone to get his football when his foot caught in the gate mechanism. His brother Shane ran home to raise the alarm. I heard him screaming and Shane came running over, telling me that he was stuck and, you know, I, I couldn't understand how he could be stuck, you know, in the gate. Um, when I went over there, I tried to help him get his foot out, out of his trainer, um, but I just couldn't get him out. A lot of people started coming around trying to help. And then about, about five, five, six, seven minutes, the gate started to close. And as the gate closed... With his foot still in it? Yeah. And as it started to close, it pulled him in between the two bars. I just didn't know what to do. What did you think was going to happen? It, it, it thought it was going to kill him. <clears throat> okay. Sorry about my bed. I always... That's OK. That. It's got Thomas on it. Sam's back to his normal, playful self, but he knows he's been very lucky. A little bit to the side. Every time it was getting stronger, the more close my head was getting. So I nearly, just the tip of my chin was inside, then nearly my whole head was in there. So, what did you think was going to happen to you? I was going to die and I've never seen Mummy or Daddy again. So, within the space of a few weeks this summer, there were three serious incidents involving electronic gates, two of which were fatal. It's left families devastated, communities in shock, and many people asking questions. Questions about the safety of the growing number of electronic gates in our communities. from posh apartment blocks to public buildings and increasingly our homes, there's been an explosion in the number of automated gates. 
Ian Law publishes a trade magazine for the industry. Over the last five years, is probably about 35%. It's, and it's grown phenomenally. It's grown, it's grown within that 30, as I say, 35% inside that short period of time is, is considerable. When you're talking about such sophisticated pieces of equipment. Automatic gates are big business in Wales. Ian estimates there are 165 companies installing them. Plus there are ironmongers, manufacturers, security firms, house builders and many other companies involved. Gates to suit all budgets and properties are now available. Michael Skelding from the Door and Hardware Federation has seen the industry grow dramatically. This company in the Midlands has benefited. It's grown to be one of the biggest gate manufacturers in the UK. I think automation for gates has become more affordable uh, and the convenience factor has led to more and more customers specifying automatic gates. Unfortunately, I think there hasn't been a realisation among every contractor that what he's now doing is creating a machine. And I think it's been the case, really, that people haven't realised that from being, say, a fencing contractor, suddenly you've become a machinery designer. My belief, based, I have to say, on largely anecdotal evidence, is that there are many gates out there that have not been installed correctly in accordance with the regulations. I think potentially the result of that could be further fatalities unless action is taken. Thankfully, it's very rare for a person to be killed by an automatic gate. But when it's a child, and when it's your child, that's of little consolation. Dziecko, które miało za pięć dni skończyć sześć lat, nie doczekała się swoich szóstych urodzin, nie doczeka się już swoich dziesiątych, szesnastych i następnych. Because this gate and things like that are everywhere, in shops, in car parks, we have to know that it's very dangerous and we have to do something to save other people, other kids maybe. Across Wales, electronic gates continue to be installed and there are plenty of laws in place that should ensure they're all up to standard. Firstly, there's the European Union Machinery Directive, which has been fully implemented by the UK government supply of machinery regulations. There are also CE standards to be aware of. Then there are related laws such as the Construction Products Directive, the Electromagnetic Compatibility Directive, Building Regulations Part P and K5, and the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 Section 3. Finally, of course, there's good old English common law. Not surprising, some in the industry believe the rules are confusing. There are far too many tiers and there isn't one norm for everything. That there's particular compliance in different particular spheres and in different particular situations. And that makes for complication. Certainly if you are a customer uh, wanting a gate, you don't and can't possibly understand all of it. The body in charge of explaining and enforcing the rules in the UK is the Health and Safety Executive. They believe their guidance can lead installers through the legal maze. I can see their point that if they felt they had to become expert in the fine detail of the relevant standards and directives, that might look like a slightly complex reading process. I wouldn't advise them to do that because, frankly, we've done that for them. The very clear message we're giving through our website and through our other frontline inspecting activities is there are legal standards to meet. They're not complicated. There's no reason why this should happen again. There may be laws, but in Bridge End, something went wrong, and Carolina's death has affected the whole family. I've got daughter in the same age to Carolina, so they play together. We lived in the same house for, for about a year. Last year, when Joseph was in hospital, Carolina spent about a week in my house, and she was fantastic. Got a lot of memories with Carolina. The law says the buck stops with the installers. It's up to them to make sure each gate is safe. But every job is different. There's room for interpretation, and some worry safety is being compromised. 
is that if I came to you and wanted to sell a gate as a manufacturer, you're looking for something that shuts and closes. You wouldn't think about entrapment uh, and the problems that that could cause. So when I say to you, well, you'll need safety edges on this, and you could say, well, how much is that going to cost? And you'd, I'd say, hmm, perhaps I might put another 500 pounds on your contract. You'd say, well, do I really need them? And perhaps I could, I could talk you into not having them. So those in the know say the laws covering the installation of automatic gates can be confusing. What's more, many say the legislation is being overlooked. We've discovered it is possible for a gate installer to ignore good practice and get away with it. Going up. Put it this way, you or I are happy to walk into any lift because we're confident that this is what happens and we're going to be safe. And that is because every single lift is either fitted or checked by a certified lift specialist before anyone can use it. But I wouldn't be happy to stand in the path of a randomly closing electronic gate because despite the devastation that this machinery can cause, there is no inspection required to make sure that it's safe. As it happens, I'm pretty confident this gate is as safe as it gets. So much so, I'm going to stick my car in the middle of it. And sure enough, the sensors on this gate spot me and wait for me to sort myself out. It was installed by Richard Jackson's company, one of the biggest in the UK. He was also concerned by the accidents this year. The fact that two children have died and we've had some near misses, they're just things that there's absolutely needless deaths and needless accidents. Currently, is there anybody at all that is checking that gates, electronic gates, that are installed as of now are safe? No. I would love there to be a body that signs all the gates off in the same way that um, you would sign off other installations such as a gas or electrical installation in your home. Now the health and safety executive are the obvious body to do those checks but they favour a different strategy. It would take too long and it would have the damaging effect of actually appearing to transfer the risk from where it belongs, which is with the people who make and install the gates and maintain them, that transfer it onto the regulators going around looking at, out for 10,000 gates and slowly working our way around, as if we had to be there for the problem to be solved. We don't. There's now a drive to get the government to tighten the law. Last month, a petition was handed in to Downing Street by Carolina and Samelia's families. They were supported by Richard Jackson, who set up the Gate Safe campaign. Gate Safe uh, Summit started in October at the Institute of Directors. We had a variety of people from across all industries, and the idea of that was to, firstly, to get a technical working party going. The second thing was to try and raise public awareness. Again, just really trying to get all aspects of the, the gate automation industry and every associated trade aware of the problems that uh, can happen if they don't install a safe gate. Annette Golabek represented Carolina and her family at Downing Street. Back in Bridge End, life is full of memories of her young cousin, and she's determined lessons are learned from her death. Family is the most important value, I think, for us. Um, I think we become, our relationship become even stronger after the tragedy that happened. But it's obviously, it's really difficult for all of us. I remember her in her days when she was laughing. We, we talk about her quite a lot. About uh, Joseph and Barbara, they share their memories about her, the good memories when she was around us. The campaign is really, really important for me personally because she was my cousin and something like that shouldn't happen to anyone. Samelia's cousin Tony has thrown himself into the campaign too. His spare time is spent photographing gates, lobbying and telling Samelia's story. On one of the cards, one of the young one of the children of her school wrote saying, 
So Amelia was my best friend and I turned over because she gives good hugs. It's not only the family, but there are a lot of people who miss this smiley young girl, as we well can see. Nothing can fill the place of Samelia, nothing. You know, when I'm thinking about it, you know, I stop and I have to go away and think about why am I doing it? I'm doing it so you don't have to feel the way I'm feeling. The families want gate installers to be better regulated. The reality is anyone can put up an electronic gate, and that includes me. If I feel confident, I can do it all by myself, starting with buying my own gate where most of us do our shopping on the internet. Oh, hi, yeah, I wonder if you can. Um, I've been having a look at your website, and I'm just trying to price up a set of electronic gates. Metal, I think. Well, my, my husband's quite good with electrics. Including delivery. Oh, wow. All right. Thanks for your help. Thank you. Bye. So, for less than a thousand pounds, I can get myself a gate and all the kit that I need to make it automatic. And I can then either fit it myself or I could hire in a contractor who could do it for me, but they might not be any more of an expert at it than I am. But does any of this mean the automatic gates out there are dangerous? I think I, I would actually like to do a survey uh, to establish what uh, the parameters are. Uh, at the moment, the evidence is, uh, for me at any rate, only anecdotal. And my uh, perception is that quite possibly 50% of the gates out there might be uh, in some way defective when it comes to safety devices. Some say that's a conservative estimate. Gate installer and manufacturer Richard Jackson asked his staff to carry out a snapshot survey of automatic gates. He was looking out for basic safety features like clear labelling, photo cells to detect objects and anti-crush fenders. He was shocked by the results. We surveyed 67 gates. Um, of those 67, none of them were fully compliant with the regulations as far as we could see and 10% of them had no safety at all. How many of those gates would be dangerous then to kids or anybody walking through them? Potentially all of them. Uh, the 10% would be very dangerous. So in a snapshot view of gates, 100% of them were, in your view, dangerous? Yeah. Were you shocked by that? Appalled. That survey was done in England. We decided to do a spot check here in Wales. We filmed 20 gates and took the footage to show Richard Jackson to see if he spotted any of the same problems he saw in his own checks. It didn't take long. There's no signage on the gate to warn anyone that it's automatic. Looking at that gate, it didn't appear to have any five cells behind, which is an issue. Push pad there that you can reach through from the wrong side. No obvious safety in any form on that. What, so someone could put their arm through that? Yeah, it would certainly break your arm, uh, could well tear it off. Well, this one looks absolutely horrible. I'm getting tired of asking you this, but what potentially could happen with this gate? Again, a death. If I were the owner of that property, I'd be absolutely terrified. Out of the 20 gates, What's your verdict? Uh, there's one that I, I think is a good installation, and there are probably another two that may be a good installation. I'd need to do a, a full inspection, but the vast majority are, are still accidents waiting to happen to a greater or lesser extent. So 17 of the gates that we've shown you, yeah. how far would you go? Are they dangerous? Yes. Every one of those gates has got the potential to uh, have an accident caused by it in one way or another and we'll be contacting the owners of the gates that raised concerns. Remember, it's one gate installer's opinion formed from picture evidence. It's not a full inspection, but it does suggest that there are problems. There is an issue with gates, or whatever percentage of gates have got shortcomings. The quickest thing to do is provide the technical information so that installers and users can take responsibility for the health and safety risks that are in their lives. In Bridgend, Carolina's family wait for the results of the investigation. 
They cannot come to terms with what's happened, and Joseph's health is very fragile. His heart and Joseph was in a very bad condition, and doctor told us that we've got actually two hours to say him goodbye. So Barbara back to home, and she tried to prepare Carolina that probably she never see her dad. Now we real, realize that we prepare Carolina what can happen, but nobody prepared them that after three months they have to say goodbye to Carolina. But in their grief, this Polish family have been grateful for the support they've had from the community in Bridgend. Some people don't know Carolina and never saw her, but they cry with, with Barbara and Joseph. I saw, saw it in church when people cry. They were surprised because uh, they, they have no Welsh friend here because of their English. And, but some people, when they met them on, on the street, in the church, they, they told them how, how sorry they feel for them. The aim of the Gate Safe campaign is to raise awareness and get clearer laws. The people who fit gates seem to be taking notice. Safety was the main topic at an industry conference last month, but so far there seems little movement from the lawmakers. What response have you had from government? Absolutely nothing as yet. Um, the petition was presented about 10 days ago and we've heard nothing back. The health and safety actually declined to come to the summit uh, and that I think is a, an indictment of where we are. The government declined an interview, but in a statement they said they'd consider further action after the investigations into the girls' deaths have been published. The health and safety executive says it's time for everyone to play their part in making gates safe. There's quite a large community of people who are involved um, in, in this challenge, this problem. There's a number of installers, there are manufacturers, there are landlords and other people who design and operate and manage and maintain buildings, the sort of places where these gates are to be found. And so the way we work with this sort of problem is to make sure that the people who actually are responsible for the risks are in a position to control it. For the girls' families, someone has to take responsibility. Something has to be done. Something has to be done. This cannot happen to anybody else. Barbara said this morning that she still believed that she back one day to her. For for her, Carolina is like on holiday. Some people can say that they need more time to to get better, but she said it is it is impossible. They never be like before, like, like when they had Carolina. <laughs>